ओके सो गुड मॉर्निंग आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस वन डे ऑनलाइन इंटरनेशनल वेबिनार ऑन ट्रॉमेटिक इफेक्ट्स ऑफ कोविड नाइनटीन on human migration with a special reference to teaching learning and evaluation process this webinar is organized by department of english amulakchand mahavidyalaya yavatmal district maharashtra maharashtra state india so Amulakchand College is affiliated to Sant Gadge Baba Amravati University, Amravati. So, on behalf of the principal of Amulakchand Mahavidyalaya and the management members, management council, I welcome you all once again to this live webinar. our college is one of the oldest college in our area we run so many programs and courses throughout the year and we have been conducting national international webinars so this year we have organized this webinar international webinar which is online and the topic of this webinar is effects traumatic effects of covid 19 on human migration with special reference to teaching learning and evaluation process so first of all i am very much happy to tell you that throughout the india we received an overwhelming responses from the participants and about 2000 participants have joined this online webinar and it is an honorable thing to us that the members from nigeria participants from libya syria as well as from sri lanka have also joined to this webinar so first of all program schedule of this webinar is this after the introductory and inaugural speech given by principal professor dr ramanohar mishra we will have the four sessions the first session will be conducted by professor dr gupta from madhya pradesh and then three session will be there one session will be conducted by guna sekara professor dr guna sekara from sri lanka and respectively there will be two session for 10 to 15 minutes each conducted by the nigerian scholar speakers so once again i welcome you all to this webinar and here i request professor dr ram manohar mishra principal of amulakchand mahavidyalaya so please start uh, his inaugural and introductory speech so over to professor dr ram manohar mishra thank you sir good morning to you all you are most welcome to this one day international webinar this is organized by department of english amulakchand mahavidyalaya yavatmal we have received overwhelming responses for this webinar throughout the india and from foreign countries also the selected topic of the webinar is most important and crucial therefore it must be discussed essentially in the present scenario it will help us to understand the 
ground reality of the situation ultimately we could at least try to resolve the issues related to the changes in society and teaching learning process our institute is one of the most famous and oldest institute in the maharashtra the building of college was inaugurated by india's first prime minister pandit jawaharlal nehru our former president dr apj abdul kalam has visited the college on golden jubilee celebration of the institution in 2007 the college provides undergraduate and postgraduate courses in three streams humanities commerce and science we have well equipped science laboratories and library we have research center for humanities commerce and science subjects i congratulate dr khande rao and faculty in the department for organizing this one day international webinar i wish all the success and thanks to every participant for joining the webinar i declare the webinar is inaugurated thank you very much so much thank you so much sir once again and i welcome once again all the participants dignitaries uh, scholar speakers from india as well as from outside of india from foreign countries like nigeria and sri lanka so before starting the keynote speech of professor dr ashish gupta sir i would like to express my sincere homage to great freedom fighter shri jawaharlal ji darda and sant gadge baba of our region i must express my sincere thanks first of all to the management and the president of our college and vidya prasarak mandal of course shri vijay ji darda for giving me this opportunity to conduct this webinar international webinar today thank you so much so now let me introduce our today's first scholar speaker from madhya pradesh so we are having with us one of the knowledgeable person and a man of letter and literature from madhya pradesh professor dr ashish gupta is a man of literature who is giving and serving to the educational government educational institute in the madhya pradesh so i welcome you sir to this webinar on behalf of the principal and my management so i request professor dr ashish gupta sir to deliver his keynote speech so over to professor dr gupta so you are most welcome sir so thank please you, sir. thank you khandar sir am i audible yes yeah, sir Hello. yeah okay sir uh, very first i request you to share my screen because i have to share my ppt so i request you to share my screen so once again i request you sir Okay. please start your uh, speech sure. in a uh, final session valedictory session i will once again cover up everything so please sir sure sure, sure. Uh, very first i congratulate dr ram mohan manohar mishra sir the principal of amolakshan mahavidyalay dr ganesh handerao ji head of the department of english and all the organizing team who have invited me and they have organized such a very nice international webinar 
I just come to my topic. The topic is traumatic effects of COVID-19 on higher education in India, issues and redressing. India has traveled a long way in education from the Guru Shishi practice of learning under the shade of a tree in medieval times to becoming the second largest in the field of higher education world over after the United States. In the current world scenario, new inventions in modern technologies, growing economy and competition is the order of the day. In this emerging scenario, India is trying to position itself as the knowledge of the driven economy. But sometimes, I think in the second week of March, the state government and the central government across the whole country begin shutting down the schools and the colleges temporarily as a measure to contain the spread of novel coronavirus. It's close to a month, perhaps near about two months, and there is no certainty when they will reopen. This is a crucial time for the education sector, board examinations, nursery school admissions, entrance tests of various universities, and even the competitive exams. And as far as for the working class people also. As the days pass by with no immediate solution to stop this outbreak of COVID-19, there is no hope when the college schools will reopen. The pandemic has significantly disrupted the higher education sector as well, which is a critical determinant of a country's economic future. The structure of schooling and learning, including teaching and assessment methodology, was the first to be affected by these closures. Only a handful of private schools adopt online teaching methods. We know it well. The low income private and government colleges even have completely shut down for not having access to e-learning solutions. I would like to talk about certain measures. A lot has been discussed in and around higher education institutions in the past few weeks on how to proceed with the academic calendars. Already the classes have been conducted through the various platforms. And some of the institutions have been explored the opinion of conducting the online classes. However, there are specific concerns and of course, a lot can be done to enhance the overall learning experiences. I would like to talk about certain measures that higher education institutions can take during this period to have a lasting impact in the long haul, even after the COVID-19 crisis is over. The major thing is, which I have mentioned here, the lack of new teaching methods. The Indian higher education system has been following the lecture-driven method for several years. This has turned ineffective and non-sufficient in many many a years. Besides, there is a lack of teachers, learning and development areas need which is and it should be in the form educating them. We should follow new approaches like mentoring, spot visits, digital learning, practical educational tools and we can say the involvement of research projects, SLPs, distance learning patterns, and so on and so on. Means there is the need of new teaching methods. 
needless to say that the pandemic has transformed the centuries old chat talk teaching model to one driven by technology this disruption in the delivery of education is pushing policy makers to figure out how to drive engagement at a scale while ensuring inclusive e learning solutions and tackling the digital divide the spread of covid is driving unexpected and uncertain social processes and premature return student migration is one of them right so uh, as far as we were talking about the crisis of this pandemic situation the higher education system is trying its best to give the different institutions and the policy makers to figure out how to drive out various institutions to engage in various online processes okay. now the few challenges are there and i have mentioned those challenges here for example first one as you mean that some of them in delhi or mumbai the college situated in the rural area do not have the proper internal facility internet facility assuming that some of them in delhi and mumbai have in their own small little way asked their faculty to carry out online teaching the rest of the public universities located in far away rural area or districts have not been able to implement online teaching due to poorly equipped facilities so how is it possible for the teachers or the students who are living in the rural area to fulfill this situation of course the teachers or the students who are living in the urban area perhaps they can fulfill this criteria so this is a huge challenge one more additional problem is there as far as the discipline like language in humanities or the social sciences concerned good quality reading material has not been prepared by a large number of teachers who still rely on traditional methods of classroom teaching the situation may be true in many science related disciplines also now come to the second point lack of facility in the students rural homes this is the same condition because if the student is living in the rural area then of course he may have mobile but perhaps network problems there now one more challenge is there how can online methods be followed for the conduct of practical classes in especially the disciplines where it is absolutely necessary when students have moved out of campus during this lockdown period in the absence of the conduct of practical classes the conduct of online education would fall flat well one more challenge is in the case of technical courses as well as in the common and management disciplines students have to do internship with the industry as a part of course requirements how would students be fruitfully able to undergo internship also because during this pandemic time all the industries are shut down some industries may may reopen but would they be able to comply with the internship requirements one more challenge is there what are the plans the last one what are the plans drawn up for the conduct of the semester exams evaluation of answer scripts and the announcement of the results all of which will require at least at least 6 weeks of time after the completion of the term that will throw the next year's academic calendar with 2020-21 academic year starting probably in September or perhaps October. Now, 
we will come to the next slide passive learning by the student one more problem or challenge we can say is that the sudden shift the sudden shift to online learning without any planning especially in countries like india where the backbone for online learning was not ready and the curriculum was not designed for such a format has created the risk of most of our students becoming passive learners and they seem to be losing interest due to the low levels of attention span added to this is that we may be leaving a large proportion of the student population untouched due to the digital divide that is part of many developing nations including india here i have written one more thing i i think teachers would not mind it unprepared teachers for online education because this is the reality online learning is a special kind of methodology and not all teachers are good at it or at least not all of them were ready for this sudden transition for face to face learning to online learning of course they are good teachers but as far as sudden transition of online teaching is there maybe perhaps in online teaching they are feeling uncomfortable so this is the time when we have to think that a multi prolonged strategy is necessary to manage the crisis and build a resilient indian education system in a long term because time is totally changed so there is a challenge before us the challenge is the readiness of faculty members to conduct online sessions it is the responsibility of the institution to ensure their educators their teachers well equipped with the necessary skills to conduct online sessions effectively encouragement is the very important thing encouragement of faculty teachers and one of the most undercurrent challenge that we are facing today is the readiness of faculty members to conduct the online session here i have written the opportunities because during these online sessions there are opportunities also rise in blended learning what is this rise in blended learning universities and colleges will shift to a model of blended learning blended learning is just like in google classroom and so on certain things distant learning pattern universities and colleges will shift to a model of blended learning where both face to face delivery along with an online model will become a norm gradually it will become a norm this will require all teachers to become more technology savvy and go through some training to bring themselves to the level that would be required naturally the time will come when the teachers have to be technologically savvy second point second opportunity is improvement in learning material gradually the opportunity is there when the college and university teachers will start improving their quality in their learning material rise in collaborative work usually the teachers are the insulated one but now in the country like india but now there is new opportunity where collaborative teaching and learning can take a new form and it can be monetized also i guess the most significant challenge today for any online educator is that of the low student engagement here the faculty members have to realize that these sessions could only be practical if they start focusing more on content delivery rather than information delivery 
the use of technology such as simulation is necessary to make the sessions interactive another parameter that can be considered is the continuous assessment of students which will be bound them to pay more attention and increase their engagement so these are the opportunities which in this session we have seen i am not going to take more time few suggestions are there for the teachers uh, i know that number of teachers are known to uh, these sites but i am sure that students too are there so for the teachers who don't know these sites and for the students even suggestions are there that immediate measures are essential to ensure continuity of learning and for this the open source digital learning solutions and learning management software should be adopted by the teachers and the students to conduct the online teaching and learning a number of such platforms are run by ugc ministry of human resource development mhrd inter university centers iuc information and library network infinet and consortium for education communication cec so i have mentioned certain sites if my dear friends or my dear students wants to write these sites then they can mention these sites may in short i will describe these sites also and the software swayam online course swayam online course it has teaching learning resource that any student or learner can use free of cost without registration this was earlier delivered on the swayam platform those learners who registered on this platform for january 2020 semester can continue their continue their, their learning as usual ug pg moocs this is the program which access to the learning material of the swayam ug pg courses e pg patshala this digital platform hosts high quality curriculum based interactive e content having 23000 modules in the form of e text and video in 70 post graduate disciplines of social science arts fine arts and humanities natural and mathematical science e content courseware in ug subjects this platform provides access to e content in 87 undergraduate courses with about 24000 110 e content modules so student can take the help of these swayam prabha swayam prabha this is the group of 32 dth channels provide high quality education curriculum based course content the content covers a diverse set of disciplines such as social science science commerce art performing art and human being subjects engineering technology law medicine agriculture etc cec ugc youtube channel this video is used to provide online lectures on unlimited educational curriculum and can be accessed free of cost national digital library this is a digital re repository of academic content in different formats in all disciplines the content is available at all academic levels in all leading indian languages for all type of learners including researchers and citizens and all the differently abled it also provides interface support so that it can easily be accessed on all popular forms of access devices shodh ganga shodh ganga 
I think every scholar knows it. This is a digital repository platform of near about 2,60,000 Indian electronic pieces and dissertations where research students can deposit their PhD pieces and anyone interested, especially the scholarly community, can access it openly. Shodh Sindhu, E. Shodh Sindhu. It provides access to current as well as archives of more than 15,000 crore and peer-reviewed journals. It also contains a number of bibliographic citation and factual databases in difficult different disciples. The material includes content from a large number of publishers and aggregators. It can be accessed by its member institutions, including centrally funded technical institutions, universities, and colleges. So I have provided you number of sites, number of uh, websites with which during the period of lockdown, you can use it. Now, I want to tell to the teachers and the students that a very easy step is there. With a rapid increase of mobile internet users in India, which is expected to reach near about 85% households in 2024. It is expected. Technology is enabling access and personalization of education even in remotest part of the country. We know it well that even the lowest class people is having the mobile in India, in the remotest village. <clears throat> So, we can utilize it effectively in our teaching and learning system also. So, I have mentioned here in my slide various tools, teaching and learning tools. The teachers can interact with the students with the help of mobile based learning models like Google Classrooms, Zoom, Google Meet, Edmodo, Microsoft Teams. Kahoot. I have mentioned few of them which are very, very easy to operate for both the student and the teachers. So if you have used it, then you know it well that as far as Zoom and Microsoft Teams is concerned, you can interact face to face. As far as Google Classroom, Google Meet is concerned, Admodo and Kahoot are concerned, this is very much useful when you want to take a new assignment, if you want to analyze the work of a student, then these are very much easy to use. Especially, I prefer Google Classroom, Edmodo, Kahoot, or Google Meet, through which you easily can operate and a student can easily go through it and under understand it. Uh, uh, sir, whether can I take two more minutes? Yes, or, sir, of course, of course. Please, please proceed. Okay, please okay, proceed. Okay. Lastly, I want to say one more thing that there is a very important role of parents also because if the teacher is doing his role and if even he has motivated the student, both are doing their best, the role of parent is also. The students also have an added responsibility in these circumstances but the parents to have to do their role also it is important to develop the skills and competencies the key role here is to participate in the sessions asking relevant questions actively and applying and learning in the online session I am talking about the student. But as far as the parent are concerned, the parents too can play a significant role in the environment of virtual learning. It is important for both parent and student to undergo a change in the mindset. 
parents must encourage the children to take the online sessions seriously and there should be a proper schedule of activities there would be several changes in the journey of both the students and the teachers perhaps maybe in the beginning they may hesitate but gradually well begin is half done the current challenges will lead to a better paradigm shift we can't ignore that at this time of crisis effective education practice is needed for the capacity building of mm -hmm. young minds it will develop skills that will drive their employability productivity health and well being in the decades to come and ensure the overall progress of india the government needs to take some measures to ensure the overall progress in the country but as i have written in the slide time never wait this tough time will also pass till then stay at home stay safe thank you thank you very much Thanks thank you to the thank, thank you. you so much thank you so much sir once again dr ashish gupta professor and head department of english government girls college baitul mp sir topic was traumatic effects of covid 19 on higher education in india issues and redressal thank you so much for your informative and full of details lecture in his lecture he has suggested so many things to both the sectors in education to the student as well as to the teachers community so on behalf of the principal of our college and the management i extremely uh, thankful to you i owe you a great debt of gratitude thank you so much sir once again so as for the schedule we'll go for the second session and for the second session we are having with us one of the knowledgeable personality from the nigeria the second speaker is vanze morin gazi she is a lecturer in federal college of education so actually it is a technical education she is from asaba delta state nigeria she is having 9 years of teaching experience and she is one of the such knowledgeable personality who is serving in the nigerian country and trying to cope up with this covid 19 over there so over to vanze morin gazi from nigeria welcome you ma'am welcome to this webinar over to one thank you very much thank you and good morning everyone good morning everyone good my morning name is good morning mrs wanze morin ngozi like he has already said i'm a lecturer at federal college of education technical asaba delta state nigeria it's an honor that my esteemed and knowledgeable friend professor dr ganesh who is the head of english department amola chan college india amola chan college is affiliated with san gagre baba university india professor dr ganesh has invited me as a resource speaker for this online one day international webinar on the topic traumatic effects of covid-19 on human migration with special reference to teaching learning and evaluation process before my presentation let me tell you a little story about three blind men there were three blind men who had the habit of going out every morning to beg money for their daily supplies as they approached their usual spot which is beside a narrow pedestrian way they heard voices arguing about an animal lying dead at the center of the pedestrian 
what could have killed the animals, they asked each other. The only way to satisfy their curiosity was to go closer and use their hands, which is their sense of touch. The first blind man went to the right hand side, the second to the middle, while the last moved to the left hand side. When asked to discuss their findings, they all had this to say. The first said, it's an animal with two big ears and a big long body. Of course, he was talking about the, the trunk. The second said, the animal must be massive and huge. Why the third said, it's an animal with 18 body. All three men were able to discuss the result of their finding, which ended up making more meaning when combined together than the result of a single blind man. What point am I driving at? What is my point? I'm trying to say that these three blind men were able to give their worldview. What lesson can one deduce from this story? It is very simple. There is beauty in diversity and there is strength. When humans perceive, they perceive from different angle. They migrate, they think, they react and they respond. What was our thinking during this pandemic? What was our reactions? What did, how did we respond? All this will be answered in my presentation. My topic for today's presentation is COVID-19, the Nigerian scenario. According to the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC, our first index case was confirmed on the 27th of February in Lagos State, Nigeria. He was an Italian national who worked in Nigeria. He was tested positive by the laboratory network of the NCDC. Permit me to say that Nigeria was already aware of the existence of this virus, such that when the first index case emerged from one of its states, the first step taken by the federal government was to ban airlines and close international borders. More measures were intensified to prepare and monitor travelers, especially those coming into our country. As our number began to increase, bans were extended to movement on land and interstate movement. This gradually changed to closure of workplaces, markets, places of worship, shopping malls, and closure of schools, leaving online education as the only alternative for teaching, learning, and evaluation. What was the scenario before the pandemic Hello. Hello. Are you listening to me, Gazi? Hello. Hello. Vanze, ma'am, are you listening? Are you still there? Just of education. Use a call problem of connectivity Gonzi ma'am hello are you listening to me Gonzi ma'am am I audible to you Okay, no problem at all. We will connect her in a few seconds. So we will move towards the third session. Third session. And uh, the third session will be conducted by uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Agam Padi Sabit Mandis Guna Sekara. Sir is a senior lecturer 
Faculty of Education, Horizon Campus. Are you there, sir? And after this session, there will be the fourth one, which will be conducted by one more speaker from the Nigerian country, Nigeria country. She is also a lecturer, Department of Computer Education, University of Nigeria. And her topic is COVID-19. Can webinar be a way forward in a Nigerian education system? So here, first of all, before this thing, I'd like to call upon over here, Professor Dr. Agampodi Sabith Mandis Gunasekara from Malabay, Sri Lanka. Are you there? Gunasekara, sir? Have you joined? Have you joined? Hello? Hello, hello. Huh, sir? I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So welcome to this international webinar. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, welcome to this web uh, webinar on behalf of the principal of Mind College and the management of Amalakshan Mahavidyalaya. I welcome you, sir. Hearty welcome to this webinar once again. So I request you, so please start your speech. So over okay. to you, sir. Okay. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you so much for joining another important webinar, which shall reference to teaching, learning, and evaluation. First, I would like to thank Professor Dr. Ganesh Kandero, head of the Department of English, Amalakshan Mahavidyalaya of Maharashtra, India, which is affiliated to Sangaj Baba Amaravati University for hosting such a valuable webinar. And I also want to mention the name of the professor who introduced me, Professor, me to Professor Kandero. He is Dr. Manoj Bhagat, Butle College, Degras, District Yavatmal, Maharashtra, India. So my name is Sabit Gunasekara from Sri Lanka. COVID-19 pandemic on teaching, learning, and evaluation with special reference to Sri Lankan higher education. Yeah, Guna Sekara, sir, are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, please proceed. Please proceed. Hello? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, sir, first, please, please go ahead. First, uh, first of all, I would like to tell you in brief how Sri Lanka has become successful in uh, controlling the crisis up to some certain extent. Uh, I will explain the strategies taken by uh, the Sri Lankan government to control the COVID-19 pandemic, my point of view. First, uh, it was rapid reaction to early uh, warnings. Uh, when the Chinese authorities and WHO issued warnings of a new virus strain, Sri Lanka reacted rapidly while most Western countries carried on unconcern, thinking that it was only a problem to China. Secondly, Sri Lanka adapted to WHO guidelines. Sri Lanka realized the threat and adapted to the guidelines issued by WHO, while some other countries continue to enjoy their usual jolly lifestyle. Third strategy was establishing a quarantine center at the airport. This was at the capital of the country, which is Bandaranaike International Airport in mid of January. This was done taking the precedent of Chinese experts. It was a kind of unprecedented quarantine measure taken by any country in the world. Next, next one was issuing warnings by Ministry of Health. Particularly, the warnings were issued safeguard to pregnant women, children, 
elderly people, those who are suffering from other complications. Setting up an action committee at national level is the next one. So the particular committee was appointed by the president of Sri Lanka and is considered as an initiative of the success. Establishing quarantine centers island-wide. As 23rd March, 45 quarantine centers had been built in the country by the armed forces covering all the districts in the country. The process was intensified by employment services to locate possible COVID cases throughout the country. Next strategy was a collective effort of all the stakeholders, armed forces, health sector, private sector, philanthropists, they all contributed for the controlling from the outset, particularly the attitudes, the behavior and the overall help of general public to make the process success cannot be neglected. Private sector made available large but unoccupied hotels to house people being quarantined. A lot of school and university students have been contributing to combat the pandemic by going for new inventions. ISU beds are locally manufactured. Even small hospitals were built. Finally, locking down the country as the last resort. So the country was locked down in order to stop infected people coming to the country and to stop the spread of agents spreading from district to district and from town to town. Even national transport was wholly stopped from functioning. By doing these things, we could reduce the total number of deaths to just 10, while the developed countries like USA experienced more than 100,000 as victims of the pandemic. So as a result, of spread of corona and a reported number of deaths all over the world, there was a big panic among the citizens and the schools were closed. State and non-state universities followed rule. Almost all the academic institutions were closed, even tuition classes were closed from mid of February, thinking that we would be able to start the institution sooner. However, we have not been able to start schools and universities even today due to the fear of possible second wave. In 2003, Sri Lanka initiated a special project called DEMP, Distance Education Modernization Project. And more than 6 million US dollars had been spent on this. The purpose of the project was to convert traditional teaching learning methodology of some of the programs to web-based and blended learning. Unfortunately, the project was not successful at that time due to ignorance of the public and lack of interest of stakeholders. Now Corona has come and the stakeholders of the particular project have now realized the value of initiative. Now there has been a rapid catch up on the part of universities and urban schools in online learning. It should say, I should say that the process has been a considerable success during the period of three months. So most of the private universities yes. and some of the programs of government universities have been conducting their academic activities with the help of digital technologies. Non-state universities have been collaborating with some telecommunication partners such as Dialogue and has become successful in delivering lectures. Zoom, Google Meets and Microsoft Teams applications are widely used by the higher education institutions. It has become a successful initiative among non-state universities because majority of the students who are studying in non-state universities are from rich and upper middle class families. Almost all have laptops, smartphones and other devices and can afford to pay for internet 
bills however the situation is not the same in state universities they have been facing many difficulties with online teaching and learning process if i talk about the issues with regard to online learning lack of equipment and technical know how are the main issues although 74% of sri lankan use mobile phones only half of them are maintaining smartphones due to economical constraints only 12% of families have domestic internet connections some university students do not have smartphones or laptops even if they have smartphones purchasing data cards particularly those who do not have domestic wifi connections is another issue especially when online lectures are delivered using zoom they have to spend lot of money on data it has become a big problem due to non availability of sources of income in the lockdown of occupations the alternative was the recording the lectures and uploading to oswebs and lms but the eyes of that is a one way communication no feedback can be taken from students at the time itself further there are connection issues in most remote areas in sri lanka they might be rich enough to purchase data packages but they might not have uninterrupted network connections so therefore students have to seek for uninterrupted network connections to engage in online learning so students have to find convenient places to get the internet access which on the other hand is risky due to social distancing parameters even in both formative and summative evaluation this has become a big issue students used to write answers as usual in papers and scan them using scanner apps and send them back to the examiners some students are taking photographs of the written answers and send them via whatsapp vibe etc this is also an issue to examiners due to blurring nature of photos another issue is the quality of the evaluation process we as academics are expected to maintain the academic quality of programs so we do not know exactly whether the answers written by students are their own answers or whether they have copied it from internet or from friends or books etc so particularly in summative evaluation this has become a serious issue the reason being is the amount of marks allocated to the summative evaluation in sri lanka it's usually 60 to 70% and is a substantial amount in deciding grade for the subject and thereby the final gpa therefore students might do this type of exam offenses when you do examinations or summative evaluations online some universities in order to maintain the, minimize the anomalies to maintain or ensure the quality so they have been conducting 5 to 10 minutes interviews through through online these interviews are conducted based on the assignments submitted by the students some of the universities have decided to conduct general examinations once the universities are open although they are conducting online evaluations continuously is also to ensure the quality of academic programs all the teaching learning and evaluation have been affected with regard to the practical aspects as previous speakers explained of the academic programs particularly in science medicine technology courses because students do not have laboratories expensive equipment glassware etc at the homes alternatively some academics have been using virtual laboratories simulations animations for teaching practical components it should be noted that online classroom is not equal to normal classroom where students get engaged in group work personality development discussions drama etc 
and it is not possible to maintain the student teacher relationship at the optimum level. This transfer of practical knowledge can be given by video recording of practical demonstrations. However, there are disadvantages of that method too, as students will not be able to get real experience and learn on the job. Since most of the academics do not have set videos for the purpose, and they have not been able to produce a quality video suddenly. If the practical is one that can be performed at home level, academics instruct the students to do it using the minimum resources available at home and to video record it and send it back to them. However, in Western countries like USA, Canada, UK, they do not have issues what I mentioned. They basically have the issue of covering the practical components and summative evaluations. Some institutions are planning to go for open book tests where students cannot just reproduce the things what they have learned through online. So, for example, Cambridge University has decided to conduct the academic programs online, including evaluations while conducting all small group discussions face to face. When it comes to research students, particularly the final year students, they are the group of students affected at large. In research service, they can collect data over the phone or by email in the questionnaires to the respondents. But students, those who are doing case studies, they cannot go to the fields. They cannot meet the uh, sample or the respondents or even in action research. So they cannot access the respondents. So they, are, they have been struggling in the research data gathering due to lack of access to the respondents. Some students have not been able to complete data collections and research implementations, even if, it, if they have gathered data, they might have facing above mentioned difficulties such as network issues. Students, those who have been linked to research institutions and industries are also idling at homes. One other issue is that some older academics are not familiar with digital technologies. Because of this, universities have trained them during this time period. Universities have now realized the importance of ICT for academics. Finally, with regard to the curriculum implementation at higher education institutions, it has not been a success because total curriculum includes all classroom teaching, co-curriculum activities, as well as hidden curriculum. By conducting online learning, only classroom teaching learning and evaluation can be done, although it is not up to the expected level. Affective and psychomotor aspects of Bloom's taxonomy have not been met. However, something is better than nothing, as everyone agreed. Students were not just idling, they were just doing reading or doing something being at homes. This online learning would have been more successful if we have adapted the systems methodically. So I would like to suggest to conduct more research to find solutions to these issues. For instance, if a particular local university can volunteer to cover practical components, which has not been covered by the students, those who are living and studying in foreign countries. It's kind of collaboration, I mean, so that is a timely need and that would be great if universities can come to collaborate to work like this. And with regard to the recognition of online courses, there has been an issue. So universities have to come to an agreement and solve this recognition issue of academic programs as well. And finally, to introduce more online and blended learning opportunities 
to students, especially to adult learners. So that's all I have got to say. Thank you very much, Professor Kandero, Head of English of Amarakchand Mahavidyalaya, for organizing this webinar. And I appreciate your great effort and enthusiasm towards this. So, Dr. Manoj, thank you so much for making the link between me and Professor Kandero. So, Professor Mistra, Principal of Amak, Amak, Amalakchand Mahavidyalaya, for his guidance. Thank you very much for listening. Stay safe. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Dr. Professor Gunasekera. I must take an opportunity over here to let you know something about him, which I forgot to mention earlier. He had he has done his PhD from Japan University and he is having three bachelor degrees of various different streams. So he is a man of knowledge and technology. Actually, he is actually working on various international projects as well as he is the members of he is the members of so many national and international organization. So on behalf of, on behalf of the principal of mine college, Professor Dr. Uh, Mishra sir, and of course, on behalf of the management members of mine college, I simply extend my heartful thanks to you sir for sharing your suggestions with us and for sharing your valuable and more informative thoughts with us. There is a shloka like this, which I would like to quote over here. Na chora haryam, na cha raj haryam, na bhatru bhajyam, na cha bharakari. Veye krute vardat evam nityam vidya dhanam sarva dhana pradhanam. It means one cannot be stolen, it cannot be stolen by the thieves, nor it can be taken away by the kings. It cannot be divided among brothers. It does not have a weight. So this is the wealth of knowledge and which is most superior wealth of all. And it always keeps growing. So what I mean to say, this is the platform where I was actually expecting views throughout the world about this situation and how the different countries throughout the world are coping up with the situation. Once again, thank you so much. Now, this is the time to move ahead for the fourth session. And before that, Vanze Maureen, she was earlier was dealing with her topic and she could not manage to get back online due to some technical issue. I also express my sincere gratitude to her for joining this webinar. So let's move towards the fourth session of this webinar. And let me introduce one of the eminent personality from Nigeria. She is Ogo Chukwu, Fidelia Bosu from Nigeria. She is also a lecturer in the Department of Computer Education, University of Nigeria. She is having eight years teachings of experience and her topic is COVID-19. Can webinar be a way forward in Nigerian education system? So I welcome you, ma'am. To this international online webinar, I request you. So please start your speech. Over to you, <coughs> ma'am. Yeah, hello. Can yeah, I? Good morning. Yeah, start, please. Greetings to all. I am happy to be part of this one day online international webinar with a theme Traumatic Effects of COVID 19 
on human migration with special reference to teaching, learning, and evaluation process. My name is Mosu Ogachuku Fidelia, lecturer in the Department of Computer Education, Faculty of Vocational and Technical Education, University of Nigeria. My topic is COVID-19. Can webinar be a way forward for Nigerian education system? What is COVID-19? COVID-19 is a disease caused by a new strain of coronavirus. CO stands for corona, VI for virus, and D for disease. 19 is the year it appeared again, 2019. Coronavirus is from a large family of viruses that are known to cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases, such as Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. The symptom can include fever, cough, and shortness of breath, and is transmitted through direct contact with respiratory droplets of an infected person through coughing and sneezing. We are experiencing one of the greatest threats in our lifetime. This led to the public health measures for preventing the infection by staying at home when you are sick, covering your mouth and nose with flexed elbow and tissue when coughing and sneezing and dispose the tissue appropriately immediately, washing hands often with soap and water and cleaning frequently touched surfaces and objects by infected person. This pandemic has brought the whole world to a standstill. Lockdowns are everywhere. Parents no longer go to work. Parents do no longer do their businesses. Churches are closed, mosques are closed. The children and pupils are out of schools. Currently, as of 29th May, midnight, Nigeria has 9,302 infected cases, of which 2,000, 697 has been discharged with 261 deaths. In Enugu State, where University of Nigeria is situated, they have only 18 infected cases, six in isolation center and two of discharged. Enugu State has not recorded any deaths. There are basic principles by UNICEF in collaboration with WHO that can help keep students, teachers, staff safe at school and help stop the spread of this disease. One, sick students, teachers, and other staff should not come to school. Schools should ensure regular hand washing with safe water and soap, alcohol rub hand sanitizer, or chlorine solution, and that's minimum, daily if disinfection and clean of school surfaces, promoting social and physical distancing. With all this listed by UNICEF, there is need for online learning, and this is where the use of webinar comes in. What is a webinar? A webinar is a short, is short form of web-based seminar. A webinar is a presentation, lecture, workshop, or seminar that is transmitted over the web using video conferencing software. <coughs> a key feature of a webinar is its interactive elements and the ability for a presenter to give, receive, and discuss information in real time. Webinar usually takes place in real time, but recording are sometimes used. The speaker and participants, yeah, the speaker and participants do not have to be in the same place, thanks to networking and internet connection and their respective access to data. There are many advantages of using webinar, which include Saving costs of no longer having to travel. Anonymous participation is possible. No limits to the number of participants, among others. I will ask the big question here. Can webinar be a way forward for Nigerian education system in this present pandemic? Indeed, the pandemic has woken people up to the challenges of teaching and focused some attention, attention to another equity gap and everyone is directing attention to online learning. The shutdown has left schools deserted as students return to their homes, except for staff with official residences on campus. Lecturers too have 
largely vacated their offices. The speed of these closures and the rapid move to distant learning has allowed little time for planning. Webinar cannot be a way forward for Nigerian education system in this present pandemic due to the fact that Nigeria is yet not ready for any online learning with these reasons. Poor infrastructure. Many people in Nigeria are disadvantaged in terms of poor infrastructure. In the area where I live, my family, a whole day or two or three, there might be no power supply. And in some cases, the network connection is, the internet connection is very poor. These issues highlight the challenges the Nigerian education system face in making online learning serve as an alternative for a majority of students while physical facilities are closed. Not every child has access to digital devices or internet connectivity at home. And we need to ensure those kids get access to learning resources as well. This means that learning resources need to be available on every kind of device. And it means for kids who don't have access, the government needs to find a way to reach them. And I ask whether it will be possible in my country. Nigeria's weak internet infrastructure will impede the delivery of lectures online. Even if the lecturers can arrange to do something, the next problem would be internet access for students wherever they may be. Some are in remote areas where one hardly can connect to any network. You cannot guarantee equal access for all students. Some are in the city, some outside the cities, some in their rural villages. In reality, it will not be ideal to have a thing like this where the rich will get access to internet connectivity, where the poor in the rural areas will not have anything to do. As it stands now, we cannot guarantee complete internet access in Nigeria. Power cuts is common in Nigeria. Inside the schools and campuses, when the general light is off, the school or campuses puts on generator. But have it in mind that majority stays outside the school or campus. The shutdown has affected the school system. The shutdown has affected the school system. The Nigerian education system is badly affected. Life of work are waiting for the academic and students alike with less time frame when classes resume if government does not do anything. My emphasis here is that majority of Nigerian population lives below average. They are poor. Taking online learning to them is like ripping them off the little they have got. Majority feed from hand to mouth on daily basis. Remember, curriculum and content of learning are to be seen. How do we get this content down to them? They lack basic amenities. When government has not even made provision for the less privileged at this time, this present pandemic, how can they now introduce online learning to them? The point is that teachers are not well prepared and there is need for in-service training before the takeoff of online learning. Definitely, there will be a delay in graduation. One thing this pandemic will likely teach us is that we should prepare for the use of virtual learning technology online, online instruction, and getting students and lecturers to have access to virtual libraries. As for now, Nigerian education system will be ready when all these challenges are taken care and those facilities put in places where they are supposed to be. At this point, I think I want to appreciate Dr. Ganesh, Head Department of English, Amala Kanj, and to my able colleague and friend from Nigeria, Wanze Mori. To all the participants, I say thank you for listening. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Ogochikwu Fidelia Wosu. Thank you so much for sharing with us your very <clears throat> ground realities of your country and ground realities regarding the education system in Nigeria. So thanks a lot on behalf of the principal and the management of my college. Thank you so much for joining with us for this 
webinar and sharing your very much practical views with us thanks a lot once again so <clears throat> over here once again i must extend my heart full gratitude to the keynote speaker professor dr ashish gupta department head of the department of english government girls college baitul mp then vanze morin gazi from nigeria and of course my friend honorable dr agam podi sabit mendis guna sekara and at last from the same country nigeria bosum ma'am thank you so much now our next session is a valedictory session and for this valedictory session we are having with us two experts who will share their views expert views with us about the organizing of this webinar regarding the organization of this webinar topic and speech delivered by the scholar speakers speakers so i welcome you all to the last session that is the valedictory session of this webinar and in this webinar at first professor dr manoj bhagat from butle college district yavatmal maharashtra india will share his view and then later on from madhya pradesh professor jitendra davande is working as a principal government college baisandai madhya pradesh will share with us his views about this webinar so welcome both of you to this webinar professor bhagat thank you sir professor davande sir. thank you thank you sir so over to manoj bhagat please sir okay sir thank thank you good morning good morning all the research persons dignitaries and the participants of international webinar on traumatic effects of covid 19 on human migration with special reference to teaching learning and evaluation process my heartfelt thanks goes to honorable professor dr ganesh khanderao sir head department of english as well as honorable principal dr ram manohar mishra sir and honorable management of amulakchan mahavidyalay yatmal maharashtra india for giving me this enormous opportunity here to share my views at the very outset i would like to congratulate to honorable professor dr ganesh khanderao sir head department of english i also would like to uh, congratulate honorable principal dr ram manohar mishra sir and honorable uh, management also of amolakchan mahavidyalay yatmal for the successful conduction of international webinar for conducting any program it requires hard work efforts and dedication and i think they shown their dedication and efforts and made this webinar successful as far as today's sessions are concerned all the sessions of the international webinar were i think studious learned and well managed as well i think to arrange such webinars in the is the need of our as far as the effects of covid 19 is concerned so we people know that at present how corona has affected the whole world but i think that if we take the expected precautions then there is no need to fear the disease corona the topic of today's international webinar is traumatic effects of covid 19 on human migration with special reference to teaching learning and evaluation process i will not take much
but meanwhile <clears throat> i read i read a meaningful poem on my whatsapp which was titled as i am ashamed of my poverty means in marathi mala majha garibi chi laj vat that particular poem touched me deeply oh. some of you people also might have gone to it i think in this poem the poet depicted the real scenario of the world in general and of india in particular actually i don't know who wrote that poem but that poet has depicted the real scenario of the world we all people know what happened during lockdown what i mean to say is that government took all the possible measures to stop the spread of corona no issue but still most of the common people rather we can say laborers uh, or marginal marginalized people suffered a lot during this pandemic even they didn't get a single time meal they suffered a lot because they didn't have money or rather we can say they also didn't have the facility of transportation vehicle to go to their respective places or rather we can say to their respective native places they went on their feet for thousands of kilometers so these this was the scenario of india or rather we can say maybe of entire world second aspect of the international webinar is teaching learning and evolution process we know the school colleges institution and inner cities in india and in the whole world are closed for near about two and half months so the teachers professor fraternity finished their syllabuses by the mid of the march it was the period of practicals and internal assessment examinations but the whole process suffered a lot most of the teachers professors recorded their videos and uploaded the same on the youtube they also sent the links of their videos to their students but we can say teachers and professors done their job of teaching by adopting the means of google forms google classrooms edmodo test modes then youtube etc even most of the teachers and professors conducted the mcq test for their students by adopting these above mentioned media that is good they played their roles but what about the students did they they means the students did they have smartphones or we can say android phones do they get money to recharge the data packs do they get proper network to watch those videos and the answer of this question i think is no they don't get any of these facilities as far as the remote area or rather we can say villages are concerned even they don't get light for 24 hours in some villages they don't get light to recharge their mobiles and in some villages if someone wants to speak on someone on mobile with someone else then he or she has to go on their roof to get the proper signal or we can say network so this is the scenario of, of all the uh, we can say all uh, world only they can speak with someone else when they go on their roof or when they go to the place where they can find a proper network so these are the problems that the students face who live in remote area or rural area i think online teaching learning process will not be successful until and unless they don't get these basic facilities like smartphones data packs networks etc and as far as the metropolitan cities are concerned they can get all these facilities but in classroom there is a two way communication we all people know it well but in online system it is not possible so i think this is a big hurdle in online process of teaching learning and in the end i would like to sum up by saying that 
teacher especially teacher cannot be replaced by no technology and no one nothing or no technology can take the place of a chalk and board that, that is our traditional system and by our traditional system we whatever we want to express our views or whatever want to we teach our students means we uh, express our views in a proper way with the students with the uh, two way communication so i think it is my personal opinion and i think this is the hurdle in online teaching so i would like to stop here by saying thank you all of your kind patience thank you to the organizers for providing me this platform thank you thank you very much honorable dr khanderao sir thank you sir for giving me this chance please continue okay, okay. welcome sir am i audible yes sir yes, yes sir. okay i will not take much of your time uh, as it is a you know uh, valedictory session uh, first i would like to thank uh, dr ram manohar mishra Uh, principal of amolakshan mahavidyalay uh, i would also like to thank dr ganesh khande rao head of the department of english amolakshan mahavidyalay uh, we have uh, listened to the learned scholars from different countries from di different parts of our uh, country i would like to draw uh, the attention of the audience towards uh, the colleges or towards the students who come from rural areas uh, my college is also situated in a rural area and the when we are talking about online learning online courses because maybe it it is uh, the need of the hour Uh, but what we face here in rural areas are a large large number of uh, students they come from uh, you know remote areas they do not have uninterrupted internet access so in such a condition such a situation uh, to cope up with this problem of a problem of covid or problem of lockdown the education of such kind of students cannot be completed so the situation is yeah quite difficult in such areas but i hope i hope uh, over the period of time uh, this situation you know if these people these uh, students are provided with uh, smartphones provided with uninterrupted internet services they may be able to you know, cope up with this uh, situation and also i would like to draw one attention that the teachers the professors in rural areas they also will have to be given proper training to use this technological uh, use this uh, online platforms or these technological devices so that they can deliver their lectures effectively so far we are not very used to uh, such kind of online uh, teaching online uh, sir material so this is all from me uh, thank you once again uh, dr khanderao dr ram manohar mishra principal sir and dr manoj bhagat thank you very much once again thank you so much professor dr manoj bhagat Department of English, Butler College, District Yavatmal, Maharashtra, India, and thanks a lot to Professor Jitendra Davande, Principal, Government College, Bhaisandey, Madhya Pradesh. Thank you so much for joining this webinar and sharing your views with us. thanks a lot once again on behalf of the department of english amolakshan mahavidyalay and the management of the college thanks a lot now let's move towards the last session of this webinar it is of course the vote of thanks session so first of all i would like to express my sincere heartful gratitude to 
मैनेजमेंट ऑफ विद्या प्रसारक मंडल एंड प्रेसिडेंट श्री विजय जी दर्डा फॉर्मर मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड एग्जिस्टिंग चेयरमैन लोकमत मीडिया ग्रुप सो थैंक्स लॉर्ड सर फॉर एनकरेजिंग मी एंड अलोइंग मी टू कंडक्ट दिस इंटरनेशनल वेबिनार सो थैंक यू सो मच एंड आई मस्ट एक्सप्रेस माई सिंसियर थैंक्स टू वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ विद्या प्रसारक मंडल डॉक्टर ललित निमोदिया सर फॉर एनकरेजिंग मी एंड हेल्पिंग मी थैंक्स लॉर्ड सर ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश एंड ऑफ कोर्स फ्रॉम द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ आर कॉलेज देन माय हार्टफुल थैंक्स गोज टू अवर ऑनरेबल सेक्रेटरी ऑफ द इंस्टिट्यूट श्री प्रकाश जी चोपड़ा फॉर कंटिन्यूसली स्टैंडिंग अलॉन्ग विथ मी एंड हेल्पिंग मी ऑल टाइम एनकरेजिंग मी एवरी टाइम इन ऑल सॉर्ट्स ऑफ जॉब्स रिगार्डिंग टू organization of this international webinar so i must express my sincere thanks to ca prakash ji chopra for his all time valuable guidance and support thank you so much sir then the joint secretary of our institute shri mahendra ji oswal and other honorable members of vidya prasarak mandal also so the members of vidya prasarak mandals amar chand ji darda ramesh ji munoth anil mangulkar sir ds sharma ji devidas darda ji devidas ji goplani प्रवीण जी जानी आर के मनक्षेसर अनिल अटल जी एंड कीर्ति जी गांधी अनिल पारेख जी मोहन जोशी जयेंद्र जी शाह राजेंद्र जी गांधी एंड संजय निखत so i express my sincere gratitude to all of you sir thank you so much on behalf of the department of english and as well as from the from the principal of our college on behalf of the principal of our college i express my sincere thanks and heartfelt gratitude to you all thank you so much once again and of course at last i must express my sincere gratitude and heartfelt thanks to the honorable principal of amolakshan mahavidyalaya professor dr ram manohar mishra for his all time support for his valuable guidance and helping me in all kind of work related to the organizing of this international webinar so once again with due respect i express my sincere thanks to the honorable principal of amolakshan mahavidyalaya professor dr ramanohar mishra thank you thank you so much sir at last i must express my sincere thanks to mr vishal kadam octabit software from nashik maharashtra for his valuable guidance and his all time technical support so thank you so much vishal kadam i must express my sincere heartfelt thanks to all the participants 
throughout the India who have shown an overwhelming response and joined this international webinar in a large numbers. So thanks a lot each and every participants, those who have joined from all corners of the India. And I am very much grateful to the participants, those who have joined from the foreign countries like Syria, Libya, Nigeria and Sri Lanka. And all the resource speakers, scholar speakers from Nigeria and of course from Sri Lanka. So thanks a lot. Thank you so much. On behalf of the Department of English, on behalf of the principal of the college and on behalf of the management of the college, I express my heart full gratitude to you all. Thanks a lot. So with due respect, as for the principal Dr. Ramanur Mishra sir has guided to me and for his all time support and all time guidance. Thanks a lot to the principal of mine college also. So with his due permission, I declare over here, the session is over. So thank you everybody. Thanks a lot. So stay at home, stay safe. Thank you.